Dear students, welcome to Army Public School PMA Resource Network. Before we start our today's subject, English Literature, please subscribe this page and click on bell icon. I am Rahatulayn Malik, the teacher of English Literature. In our today's subject, we are going to study Dear students, in today's lesson, we will be taking a recap of chapter number one. Then you will listen to audio track or the teacher's narration. Then there will be reading of the chapter by yourselves. You will recognize the traits of characters and then the use of vocabulary journal, just like the one you did previously. Okay, so the very first thing is recap of chapter number one. The events that took place in chapter number one are, first of all, Mary's parents and servants die of a disease. That was the very first event in chapter number one. Mary is left all alone in India, right? After the death of her parents and servants, she is left all alone in India. After that, an officer tells her, sending England, he tells her that he has heard of an uncle and she will be sent to England. Then, according to the officer's uh, story, she is sent to England where she meets Mrs. Medlock. Now, Mary comes to know about the uncle and his house. So these were some of the events that took place in chapter number one. And as uh, if you could get back to the first lesson, our first lecture, you would see that I had talked about the elements of the novel, right? So the elements of novel that were identified in chapter number one are as follows. First of all, there is exposition. If you could remember, the very first thing that we talked about was the exposition, the very start of the novel, right? So, in exposition, we had talked about the introduction of setting and characters. Introduction of setting and characters. So, in chapter number one, we have come to know about the exposition, about setting characters. So, what is the setting in chapter number one? We have come to know about is India and England. The very first event that took place was in India and the second one took place in England. And the characters we were introduced to in the very first chapter are Mary Lennox, Mrs. Medlock and Mary's uncle. So we have been introduced to setting and characters. Setting again, what is setting? It is the place where some story has taken place. Right? So the places are India initially and finally England. Right? And the characters so far. These are not the, all the characters of the novel, but the characters so far are Mary Lennox, Mrs. Medlock, and Mary's uncle. Okay. Now this is listening activity. You will have to listen to the story I'll be reading. Right? And you will keep your novels closed, right? And afterwards, you will assess that how much have you uh, been successful in understanding through this listening activity, right? So I am getting started. That is, Martha, a friendly Yorkshire girl, woke Mary up on her first day as meets and wait. Good morning, Miss Mary. I have brought you breakfast, she said. Mary looked at her. Are you my servant? She asked. Oh no, I work for, for Mrs. Medlock, answered Martha. I clean and bring your meals, uh, but the rest you have to do yourself. Who is going to put on my clothes? Asked Mary. Martha laughed. You are nine years old. You can put on your own clothes. You are only a servant. You know nothing, shouted the girl. In India, my servants did everything for me. It's so different here. 
I hate it, she said and started crying. Oh no, please don't cry, Miss Mary. Martha said kindly, I'm sorry. Look, I'll help you get dressed and tell you about your family. Mary stopped crying. That's better. Well, I've got 11 younger brothers and sisters and they all live in a little house on the moor, began Martha. The moor? Asked the girl. Yes, said Martha. Look out the window. There's the beautiful Yorkshire moor. Mary looked at the grey sky and empty land. It wasn't beautiful. My brother Dickon loves playing on the moor, Martha said. The wild birds and animals are his friends. Oh, I'd like to have an animal friend, thought Mary. She sat down for breakfast but didn't eat much. I don't want it, she said and pushed her plate away. You don't want your breakfast, exclaimed Martha. Then go out and play in the garden. But what can I do there? asked Mary. I'll tell you a secret, said Martha and she looked around. One of the gardens is locked. Nobody has been in it for 10 years. Why? asked Mary. Mr. Craven closed it when his wife died. Maybe you can find it, said Martha. It was cold winter day. The gardens were quiet and empty. Only an old gardener was outside, but he didn't talk to her. Suddenly, a bird started singing. It was in a tree behind a big wall, but she couldn't see a door in the wall. How do I get into that garden? She asked the man. What garden? He said coldly. Where the bird is, said Mary and pointed at the little bird. The old man looked up and smiled. He called the bird and it flew down to him. Oh, it knows you, said Mary. What's your name? Ben Weatherstaff, answered the man. I have worked here for years. This Robin is my only friend. I haven't got any friends, said Mary. Ben smiled. You are lonely like me, but I think this Robin likes you. Do you think so? Will you be my friend, little bird? Will you? Said Mary sweetly, and the Robin sang back. Then it flew behind a tall wall. Oh no, said Mary. It's behind that wall. Where's the door? There is no door, said Ben, and stopped smiling. No can get into that garden. Go and play now. I have no time, he said and walked away. That evening, she asked Martha, where is the secret garden? Martha looked at her. Well, listen, she said. The garden was a special place. Your aunt and uncle spent hours there. She always sat on the branch of an old tree, but one day the branch broke. It was a very bad fall. She died. Mr. Craven locked the door and threw away the key. Nobody knows where it is, said Martha. They sat and looked at the fire when suddenly the wind opened the door. Mary heard a strange noise. Do you hear anyone crying? She asked Martha. No, said the servant. It's the wind. But listen, said Mary again. It's a child in the house at the end of that corridor. Martha got up quickly and closed the door. There is nothing there, only the wind, she said and looked at Mary. Mary said nothing but thought. This house is full of secrets. Right, students. So that was a narration of chapter number two. And now you will have to read the chapter yourself twice and you will have to take important notes in the form of difficult words, in the form of, you see, important events, right? Right, students. So now you have to read out this very chapter, right? This page and the next page, that is... this one right and after you have read this chapter twice you will do what is directed to you next after you have read the chapter 
how would you recognize the traits or characteristics of characters first while reading the chapter underline the difficult or new words any word that you find difficult or it is new to you just underline it try to find out the contextual meanings of the underlined words now what is contextual meanings you don't have to look the word into dictionary rather make out the meaning with the within the paragraph or within the context or background of the paragraph and just make out any meaning that you find appropriate then read the chapter again and see whether you are successful in acquiring or in understanding the chapter or you still need dictionary to look down at the meanings of the difficult or new now the use of vocabulary journal what is the last task for today that is you have to write the underlined words in the vocabulary journal all the underlined are new words that are found difficult by you you have to write them in the vocabulary journal and write synonym and antonym for each of them for this particular purpose you will have to consult the dictionary so first underline the new or difficult words write each word in vocabulary journal and then find out or look down or look for the meaning the synonym means the same meaning and antonym the opposite meaning of that word i hope you have understood all the things Dear students, that's all for today. I hope you are making maximum out of the lectures that you have been watching. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you, Allah.